Hey everyone, welcome to Data Millennials. I'm Atul and in this video we are going to see how we can create and customize tree graph in our Looker dashboard. So we will be creating this tree graph which you can see on your screen from scratch in this video. But before we go ahead and start creating this tree graph, let's first discuss what exactly is a tree graph and how it can be useful in your dashboard. So a tree graph shows your data organized into dimension hierarchies. For example, you can use a tree graph or tree map to show the average annual sales of each item at a product category and at a product subcategory hierarchy level. Now if you see this example, I have a category saying that we have a company which generates 2,386,000 ,000 revenue for year 2022. Let me take you to raw data. So we have year, month, department, team and revenue. So suppose this data is for a particular company and if I apply filter then you will see that we have year 2022 only, then we have month 1 to 12, then we have department which is analytics. Within analytics department we have multiple teams such as advanced analytics and research, business analytics, business intelligence, data analytics, data analytics reporting and data modeling. And each of these team generated some amount of revenue in thousand or suppose this is revenue in millions, not in thousand. Suppose, yeah, let's go ahead with revenue in thousand. So in January 2022, data analytics team generated 23,000 of revenue. In first January 2022, business analytics team generated 40,000 of revenue. Similarly, Business intelligence team generated 12,000 revenue and data analytics reporting team generated 19,000 and the last sorry second last team that we have over here data modeling generated 10,000 and last team advanced analytics team generated 67,000 revenue. So we have a hierarchy over here for each team we have a same department analytics and within this analytics department we have five or six different teams. Okay. So this tree map shows you the data organized into dimension hierarchies and the value or the metrics which you have selected. So data in tree map is displayed in branches also called as nodes and each branch can have zero or more sub branches except the one parent branch which is the root and it does not have parent as the root node is the parent only. So you can think of this department column as a parent node. And this team column is a branches or sub branches nodes. So each branch is displayed as a rectangular size. You can see over here each team is displaying over here as a branch and it is colored according to the value of our data. Sizes and colors are relative to the values that we have in our raw data for all and every branches within a particular parent node. So you might be thinking where exactly these tree maps are useful. So tree maps are a good hypothesis generation tool because they can help expose the relative importance of variables and the relationship between them. So as you can see in our example tree map here that the that has a root department as analytics and within analytics we have multiple teams such as data analytics business intelligence, data modeling, business analytics, data analytics reporting, and advanced analytics and research. And now if we review the data, then here is how the underlying data for this chart is organized. It is in a tabular format. With this tabular format data, you won't be able to identify which team is doing great or what is the proportion of revenue generation of each team within this analytics department. So let's go and create this tree graph from scratch. So first of all, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on edit and then I'm going to add a page so that I can show you how we can create this tree map from scratch. So in order to create a tree graph, the first thing that you will need is a data source. Once you have your data source, then you can go and add a tree map. But suppose if you have not added your data source yet, then what you can do is that you can click on resources, then click on manage added data sources and then you can click on add data source then looker will give you this google connectors from where you can connect your data 
once your data is loaded on looker then you can go and click on add a chart then you will scroll down and you will click on this tree map once you click on this tree map then looker will allow you to add a tree map on your page so let me do one thing let me copy this header and put it over here okay as soon as you add a tree map what looker will do is that it will take some dimension value from your data source as well as a matrix as you can see over here in your setup section so what we are going to do over here is that we are going to discuss each and every option that is available over here in your setup section as well as in style section and simultaneously when we will be discussing these options we will also be updating our graph so the first option within this setup section is data source so a data source provide the connection between the component and the underlying data set so your component is this tree graph and your underlying data set is this data set which you are using for your tree graph now this source data source option helps you to select another data sources that you have already added or available data source if you want to change your data source you can select any of your added data source from here or any available data source from here and suppose if you want to add a new data source on which you want to create this tree graph then you can click on add data and again looker will take you to this connect to data section where you can use any of google connectors to upload your data or add your data source and as soon as your data will be uploaded or added in the background then the underlying data set for this tree graph will be changed and you will have your underlying data set as a new data set which you have added the next option that we have is date range dimension so this option appears if your data source has a valid date range as you can see over here in my data set i doesn't have a valid date range column so this date range dimension will always be blank we cannot add any column over here the next option that we have is dimension so dimension are the data categories the dimension values is the data contained by the dimension column such as names description or the other characteristics of a category so you can select any of the dimensions from here but as you can see the hierarchy goes something like this that we have department within this department we have multiple teams so i'm going to select department over here as my dimension and then after this i'm going to add another dimension which will be my team so that i can show within department which teams are available now the next option that we have is drill down this option gives viewer a way to reveal additional level of detail within a chart when you turn on the drill down option each dimension you add over here suppose if you have turned it on so each dimension that you add over here becomes another level of detail which you can drill into so for us we do not have any other dimension so we'll be switching off this drill down option now the next option that we have over here is metric so this metric measures the things contained in dimension and provide the numerical scale and data series for the chart so this is the metric based on which your nodes will be distributed in your tree graph so for us our metric will be this revenue and now as you can see once i have selected this sum of revenue over here that the advanced analytics and research team has a higher area over here because it has high value for its metrics which is 896 as compared to the other teams that's why it has taken a large area in this tree graph now within this matrix you will see that you have an option for op optional matrix so with this optional matrix we can define a list of additional matrix that can be displayed by the table so let me switch it off or turn this matrix optional matrix off right now and let's go to this view and right now if i go to my graph i won't be able to see any detail about my matrix but if i want to show instead of like in addition of revenue if i want to show the number of record then what i can do is that i can come over here and switch this on this optional matrix and i can add a matrix which is count of team this count of team will give me the number of employee 
or sorry this count of team will give me the count of record that we have for each team in our raw data so now if i again go back to view and i can see over here i have an option which says optional metrics right now it is showing me revenue which is 293 for business intelligence if i go over here and click on team then i will be able to see how many records are present for each of these teams so business analytics is one data analytics is one advanced analytics is one now you are seeing this one because by default tree graph takes dimension at a unique level so if we have an option over here which shows number of employees then it would make much more sense right so let's go and create a column over here it says number of employee so i'm just using random number function over here which generates a random number between 5 and 10 and now let's go and refresh the data So instead of this count of team, what I can take is the number of employee and that would be the sum of employee, right? Now if I go to view and select this number of employee, then we will see that how many employees that we have. For data analytics reporting team, we have 93 employees. Similarly for advanced analytics team, we have 93 employees. For business analytics team, we have 96 employees. For data analytics, we have 98 employees. Business intelligence, we have 96 employees. And for data modeling, we have 91 employees. So that's how this optional matrix helps us to define a list of additional matrices that we can display. Now the next option within setup is total rows. So tree map can display from 5 to 5000 rows of data and by default, Looker will select 500 over here. So it will show only 500 rows of data. If you want, you can select it up to 5000. But you have to make sure that if your data has more than 5000 of rows, your performance may degrade. And in order to enhance your performance, what you can do is that you can apply certain filters on your tree map to make your tree map or your report more optimized then the next option that we have over here is filter so this filter restrict the data that is displayed in the component which is our tree map by including or excluding values from your raw data so for example if you want to add a particular filter and within this filtration you want to exclude certain values from your tree map right so what you can do is that you can click on add a filter then you have to click on create a filter once you click on it then you have to go and click over here and write the name of the filter once you wrote the name of the filter then you have to select this option either include or exclude then you have to select a field from which you want to exclude then you have to set a condition over here and then you have to give the value and then you can click on save to apply your filter on this tree map so for us we are not going to apply any filter because we want to show all data over here and let's select revenue okay now that the filtration was the last option within setup now the next option over here is a style before we go and discuss about a style let's click on view and see our tree map so now as you can see that we have higher contrast for this advanced analytics and research because it has the highest number we can make this tree map more visually appealing using the style property from edit mode so this style properties helps you to control the overall presentation and appearance of the chart so the first option within this style is tree map and within this tree map the first option that we have is max color value it sets the color of the highest metric value so for us as you can see here 
the highest value is blue let's select it to green deep green okay now the next option that we have is mid color value it sets the color of the median metric value so let's select it to this blue and the last option within tree map is our minimum color value it sets the minimum metric value now the next option that we have over here is show branch header so these are the branch headers if you want to show it then you can click and select this show branch header else this branch header will be hidden then this is a branch header color if you want to change the branch header color you can select it from here let's keep red or let's keep some other color mm, let's keep okay let's reset it now the next option that we have over here is show a scale it shows or hide the chart scale which appears above the tree map so this is the scale to see this scale in action hover over the different branch in the chart so let's go and if we hover over different branch in the chart you will be able to see a small sort of a button which comes into action like for example business analytics is the lowest one advanced analytics is the highest one and you will see that button is moving from high to low now the next option that we have within a style is this text within this text the first option that we have is font color then we have this font size and font family from these options you can set the font color font size and font text of your tree map let's keep it at 16 pixel now as you can see over here we have this option dimension only this is the text value format if you change it to dimension metric value it will show you the dimension and the metric value now the next option that we have dimension and metric percent it will show you the percentage also so what all these dimensions values are contributing to the total overall of 100 percent now the next option that we have over here is background and border the first option is the background it sets the chart background color then we have this option of border radius it adds rounded border to the chart background when radius is zero the border background shape has 90 degree corner and when the border radius is 100 percent then it will produce a circular shape to show the circular shape you have to change the background color so let's keep this yellow color and you will be able to see that we have a circular shape over here so let's remove this background color and keep it at zero the next option that we have is this opacity it sets the chart opacity 100 percent opacity completely hides the object behind the chart and zero percent opacity makes the chart invisible so it's always suggested to either select 90 percent or 100 percent of the chart opacity the next option that we have over here is border color it sets the chart border color so let's select black border color the, then we have this option border weight it sets the chart border line thickness so let's select three and the last option you can say for border sorry background and border is this border style it sets the chart border line style we have four different options solid dashed dotted and double so let's keep double now the last option that we have within this background and border is add border shadow it adds a shadow to the chart lower and right borders so now if i go and click on view i will be able to see my tree graph which we had created from scratch and if i want to see my optional matrices for example number of team members for each team i can go and click over here and select number of employee and my tree graph will show the number of employee proportion over here as we have selected proportions so this is how basically you can create and customize tree graph in looker or google data studio happy learning and see you in the next video